bring you in warm, or I can bring you in cold. Hello there, and welcome to Mando Theory. All the things you want to know about Star Wars, but don't have the time to research it. Today we'll be discussing the Ambient Phase Pulse Blaster, also known as Mando's sniper rifle. He carries it around through most of the live-action TV show, The Mandalorian. He's supposed to have a custom-fit brown stock. I'm not sure if it's custom-fit to him or Boba Fett from the infamous holiday special, where he was seen carrying it in a few scenes. Which is part of why Darth Vader, in The Empire Strikes Back, tells Boa Fett no disintegrations when he's looking right at him because he knows that he has the ambient face pulse blaster. There is also a twin electric prongs at the front of the blaster used for shocking and melee combat instead of the long range combat that we see for most of the video of the Mandalorian. There's also a specially calibrated thermal scope that the Mandalorian uses for tracking all of his bounties and everything. Which makes it a lot easier for him to find things in the dark or whenever he's looking for it in the desert where everything's brown. It's a single shot disruptor rifle, which means it disintegrates people on impact, has a force of a hundred blaster bolts. It was banned in the Empire and the Republic. Because even Darth Vader, the Dark Lord of the Sith, found it too brutal and horrible to be used by anyone. The disintegrations tear you apart, atom by atom, inflicting a large amount of pain. It looks really fast to anyone watching you, but to the person being disintegrated, it takes ages and ages. Eventually, they just get down small enough that we can't see it anymore but they're still being disintegrated. And it shoots solid projectiles, like the bullets we have here, the Tuscan Raiders, or the rifle that Luke used in A New Hope, for shooting Womp Rats on the canyons of Tatooine. It's kind of based on the same design theory, kind of. And also, we also have... The shock prongs have enough force to knock out, if not kill, their target. Mandalorian used it to help defend himself against several large creatures saving his life when we were watching him, and probably a lot more before we were able to see him too. Previously before he met the child. He used it on the first episode, The Mandalorian, against a Ravenac who was trying to pull his ship down through the ice. He tried hitting it with the uh, disintegration bolt, but he missed and glanced off the side of the ship. Luckily it didn't hurt his ship, because it was just a glancing blow, not one that would penetrate into the iron hull of the ship. And then he had to shock the Ravenac, just so it would just let go of his ship and he could fly off. In the next episode, the child, he ends up getting in a fight with a mud horn, trying to get an egg to bring back to the Jawas, so that they would give him the parts to his ship with the Razor Crest. I'll be doing a separate video on that in the future. He tried shooting the Mudhorn with the disintegration rounds, but the Mudhorn was so fast that he just ended up missing all of the shots that he tried. And he then later on in the fight, after he dropped the rifle and found it again in the mud, he tried shocking it with the prongs, but the Mudhorn dodged with that and hit him with its horn, cracking open his dark steel armor. This was before he got his shiny Beskar. The only way he defeated the Mudhorn was through Grogu helping him with the force, holding it up so it would fall at his Viroblade knife. A Viroblade is kind of like a lightsaber, but it hums really, really fast and cuts through a lot of things. And it can stand one or two blows from a lightsaber. And in that episode, there are more Jawas killed than in all the rest of Star Wars combined. Then, we didn't see it again for a while, at least in any major huge fights. 
until we got to the crate dragon when he was trying to f help the sand people and the people of Freetown destroy and kill the create dragon. The only reason he was doing it was to get the Boba Fett armor back from the marshal so that it would be returned to the tribe because that is the way. And they were having a hard time a bit. It killed several people from Freetown, the create dragon, and dozens of sand people or Tusken Raiders. Him and the marshal were flying up shooting at it when all of a sudden Mandalorian Mando went down to the ground, grabbed the Bantha full of mining TNT and explosives, waited for the Create Dragon to eat him and the Bantha. And after he had been swallowed with the Bantha, he used the uh, shock prayer on his rifle to electrocute his way out of the Create Dragon. And then he was shocked out with his jetpack. It looked really cool and awesome. And after that, he blew up the Create Dragon right as he was flying out, making it even awesomer. The Razor Crest was destroyed on the planet Tython at around 9 ABY. We'd only seen it for about one year. The Ambient Phase Pulse Blaster was also inside of the Razor Crest on the planet Tython, because the Mandalorian wasn't using it then. He'd gotten into a fight with Boa Fett and Fennec, but they had formed an alliance against the Empire, and just as they had done that to protect baby Grogu, the Empire came down and started attacking with stormtroopers. Just as Boba Fett had made it out of the Razor Crest after taking his armor, the ship was blew up by a light by a blast from Moff Gideon's light cruiser. The only thing to survive was fragments of the ship and the Mandalorian's Beskar spear. He was also seen using it when he broke into the compound where Baby Yoda was held. He used it to take out several of the aliens there. I don't know exactly what species they are. And he used it later again when he broke into the client's drunk house. Just killing all the stormtroopers and almost everyone there. Getting back Grogu. And then he had to go and face off the Bounty Hunter Guild. Which he disintegrated several of them, making them hide until one or two of them snuck up behind him with blasters. Making him drop his rifle and use a viro blade and his blast rifle. We see it again on a forest planet with he Cara Dune using it to anger an ATST to make the drivers walk right into a trap she was hiding behind. After that, when they free the village, you see the Mandalorian walking away with the ambient phase pulse blaster and Grogu back to his ship, the Razor Crest. We don't really see much more of the phase pulse blaster because the Mandalorian was running out of ammunition and bullets for it, which was really hard to get because it was been banned for almost over a hundred years. And they were really expensive because for normal credits because they're so hard to get, and even more so for imperial credits because they were worth less than any other credits because the empire wasn't there to back them up anymore. I bring this episode of Mando Theory to a close. See you next time. Mando Theory out. <laughs>